Hey guys, so today I have with me Hillary Clinton's nephew, Zach Rodham, who happens to be a screenwriting major here at USC. Zach, thank you for joining us. Oh, of course, it's my pleasure. Thank you. All right, well, first, I just right off the bat, I just want to ask a couple questions because yeah. obviously you're related to Hillary Clinton and she's a big, big deal right now. She's a <laughs> yeah, presidential you can candidate. say that. Yeah, definitely. So, <laughs> you know, could you tell me a little bit more about her from, you know, your own personal experience? What, what's the, who's the Hillary Clinton uh, outside of the elections, outside of politics? Yeah, I mean, she is a regular person, you know, just like you and me. Um, but, like, I, I think she really is just a very caring, very inspirational person in my life. I don't really think I would be the man I am today if it weren't for some of the things that she's done and just kind of following in her example for me. Um, and she just really cares about family. Um, her grandchild, uh, Charlotte, you know, she's absolutely lovely. She loves her to death and uh, she's always been there for me and my family and uh, helped us in many different ways. Like, for example, she helped pay for my education when I was uh, growing up. So, I mean, I owe a lot to her and um, so does our family. Um, but she's really an incredible person. And through what I've seen in our interactions, just like, uh, you know, outside of politics, I can just tell that she'd just be a great leader and without a doubt, it's the best person to, uh, for the job. So I remember uh, I saw on a Facebook post that you uh, made uh, a month ago right. that you were saying, you know, even if you weren't related to her, you would still vote for her um, to be president of the United States. So why, why do you think that she's the best person for the job? Well, first of all, I, the thing that I, the question that's really on my mind after the, involving this election is, who's the best person to follow up the Obama administration? Uh, who is going to be the best person to take the progress that was made in the last eight years and build upon that in a pragmatic fashion? And um, I think she's going to come in there and her plans really uh, are feasible uh, for the next eight years and they don't overpromise. So just for an example, like her college plan, um, it promises free community college tuition and it would relieve uh, about 8 million or about 8 million people out of college debt uh, as opposed to you know uh, an overarching sweep just free education with money that we don't really have so that's one example um, and I just and also um, on health healthcare for example we've seen that she's a proven and capable when it comes to that. In the 90s, uh, she was able to compromise and strike a deal with the Republican-led Congress as a first lady introducing legislation for the uh, Children's Health Care Act, which is now covering uh, millions of children in low-income families. So there's, she's proven, she's a proven leader, and she's got the most um, intelligent, straightforward answers for like the next few years, you know? Gotcha. So when it comes to college students, because obviously you're a college student, I'm a college student, um, and I feel like across the country, a lot of college students are appealing more to Bernie Sanders and right. his ideology. So as you know, you know, you might be, obviously you're related to her, but in the minority of people who are voting for Hillary in the 2016 election, um, but how do you think she should go about appealing to college students and have you given have you talked to her at all have you given her any advice about any of that no I mean it's been obviously it's been tough to contact her lately I mean she's been pretty busy um, yeah I mean in regards of appealing to young people it's it's tough because this is for many of us this is our first election uh, that we're voting and that's really meaningful and Bernie Sanders came in with all these really exciting promises and I can understand why people want to follow him because, you know, he is a powerful speaker, he's convincing, and he's passionate. Um, so it's easy to understand why people of our generation want to go to him, considering just like the state politics has been in for the past, you know, for our entire lives, through the Bush administration and through the Obama administration. But I think the thing is, just don't get like too excited. You have to really think about the future and think about just how we can continue to focus on long-term solutions instead of just quick fixes, you know? Um, so 
that's just the thing that we need to think about as young people. We can't get too excited. We just have to think about it and really just analyze like, okay, what's going to work best for us in the next eight years? Gotcha. So, so, yeah. Is there, you know, a moment that you've had with her in the past that has stuck with you that you really, oh, yeah. that represented who she is as a person? And can you describe that for us? Well, definitely. I mean, it's a bit of a sad story, honestly, but it's definitely something that's really stuck with me for a while and probably will be forever. Uh, about five years ago, um, my grandma passed and her mother. Um, and I just remember a moment when we were all just kind of sitting in, in this uh, conference room in George Washington Hospital in DC. And we were kind of just waiting for the news, waiting for the inevitable and just kind of like sitting around and just talking about how my grandma just touched all our lives. And, um, you know, I kind of, I've never felt closer to her than that, that moment was when we were just reminiscing about how she influenced our lives. And she really was an incredible person. I mean, she was able to raise my aunt and help her become the person who she is today. And um, then it was a few days later uh, at the funeral, everyone in the family came up and we all delivered our eulogies. Um, and obviously my aunt came up and gave a great speech about her, but um, <laughs> my uh, family had asked me to speak. So I was like 16 years old and I was in front of a crowd of about 300 people. So I was like really nervous. I was shaking in my boots and I got up there and I spoke and the hug I got from my aunt after that, <laughs> I mean, that was, that was a moment that I'll always, that I'll always remember. And she told me that <laughs> I gave probably the best speech of that, that day. And I was like, wow, even coming from her. I mean, that was just an incredible moment and just, yeah. <laughs> um, and I remember later that weekend, she and my entire family came to see me uh, play football against our biggest rivals in the game. And I mean, it was an incredible week. It was sad, but it really made us close and it really bonded us. Gotcha. Well, so hypothetically, if you could look at Hillary Clinton, like let's say that she got the nominate, the Democratic nomination. Right. Who do you think um, on the Republican side could be a contender against her? Well, <laughs> that's kind of tough to think about because in my opinion, I mean, none of the Republicans that are running are really have a great shot, but I think the one that has the best shot to give her a real run for her money is, uh, um, John Kasich, uh, probably because he's the most sensible on these issues and can really, uh, I don't know. I feel like challenge her. Um, also maybe like, uh, Ted Cruz, could also be a good contender. I feel like those are probably the two candidates I think the Republicans have that would get for, you know, the toughest time. If you want to see more from the interview with Zach Rodham, you can check it out at uscannenbergmedia.com.